here is Shebek in the newly white painted studio which is pretty empty so I'm sorry for the echo sound I'm working on that because it is really empty so far uh, but I'm doing this episode because I'm more and more frustrated about many most of the online reviews which are the paid ones um, on which we are being told that the new stuff is better lighter stiffer faster but only more expensive and no longer compatible to our old stuff so that we have to buy uh, the new one uh, and this episode will be about one by drivetrain i'm not saying one by drivetrain is bad i just want to share with you what i've learned about these drivetrains over the last one and a half year and we have here pretty interesting collection of the bike we have because we have both SRAM and Shimano we have trail bike trail enduro but more trail uh, Canyon Spectra on 1x11 SRAM we have um, this is fully stock bike we have stock cross-country racing FSI 1x11 Shimano we have converted old school converted by shy bike Kendra Killer 1x10 Shimano and we have stock gravel marine gestalt on 1x10 let's say SRAM Sunrise components I'm gonna share with you four problems most of this, these bikes uh, will have most of the 1x11 or 10 drivetrain um, will have and then at the end I will tell you also on which of these bikes I feel the best on the 1x drivetrain all right so let's start with the problem number one in a no particular order and it's the chain line and back pedaling okay on the one by drivetrain so one by ten in this um, in this on this model marine gestalt we are forced to do what we were being told never to do with two by or three by drivetrain which is crossing the chain and then when we back pedal on the one by drivetrain the chain drops down okay it's not a big issue for some of the people so i'm gonna share with you at the end uh, that you really need to think about what's the kind of use for you of the bike how are you going to use your bike but this can be problematic in some uh, in some te technical uphills when you really want to uh, back pedal just you know for a second uh, this is my converted which is quite okay sometimes it drops well this is the chain line that i made myself and I'm happy with this one quite good one and then a cross-country racing machine this is cool this one doesn't have this problem sometimes if you would spin really fast the chain would drop down but it doesn't affect you doing any you know technical stuff on your bike at all and finally the 1x11 SRAM sometimes works sometimes does not work okay and then it can make it quite difficult to go back to the one by one let's try once more do it really fast yeah this is the asymmetrical design so the chain line is better but this is prob problem number one so the, the chain line is far from being perfect and that will also cause some other problems all right so Problem number two, which is very important for myself as a cross-country uh, racer and believe me, uh, you know, uh, Nino Schutter riding 1x11, 1x12 uh, drive-thru and, you know, Fumik or whoever your, your favorite rider is does not mean they have a choice. Most of them would not have a choice. They, they really have to use just the newest bike with the newest components. So think for yourself because problem number two is actually the power loss all right so you will most likely hear that this drivetrain is pretty loud and that that's the the louder drivetrain. and one by will be the louder drivetrain especially on the steep climbs when you really need to push hard um, and that means that those uh, links of the chain here just by the uh, by the uh, chain ring are r really have to make the turn in order to get to the um, uh, chain ring on the sprocket on the cassette and then they make a turn once more and that causes 
a lot of more friction, a lot of friction, guys. And I would believe that when we push really hard, like when we push 500, 600, 800 watts on the steep uphills, the friction is even higher there. So uh, maybe it's not a big issue for those, uh, you know, weekend riders, but I don't like that the industry and those paid reviewers don't tell us that we lose power here because we are being told buy a new chain with the coated links in order to save 5 watts, buy new $300 ceramic bearings for your bottom bracket in order to save 7 watts, buy a new you know, um, derailleur cage and so on by you, in order to save 2, 5, 15 um, watts, we are losing watts, especially uh, on the steep climbs on the one by drivetrain and it is really important for me I'm definitely converting my machine into 2x11 but most likely 2x10 okay so we lose the power I don't know how much power uh, we use this is not a scientific approach but you can simply feel that your pedals would not spin as long as it they would on the to buy drafting on the lightest gear, on the lowest gear, right? This is really cool because here we have asymmetrical frame, so the chain line here is way better. I would say this is the best one, the best bike for the one by uh, drivetrain. Problem number three, and that would be lack of gears. And lack of gears on the one by 11, one by 10, one by 12 Eagle as well, will cause two other problems, and that would be lack of speed, either, uh, either a low speed or high speed. And number two, really important for myself, the cadence, lack of the right cadence. Uh, so let's say we have here 32 uh, chainers in the front and then in the rear I have uh, 11 by uh, 42 teeth. And when I go down the hill, I wanted to make really cool episode with the lefty going down the hill on my favorite mountain with some really nice um, descent. I would uh, just run out of the gears with by 40 kilometers per hour. 40, lousy 40 kilometers uh, per hour. Uh, I don't understand it even more on the bike on which I would have, I would want to have even more speed. And here the stock bike has 30 teeth uh, and 10 teeth in the in the rear on the 27.5 inch wheel uh, you round out of the gears just as long as you hit the descent you, you no longer pedal and also high cadence on the te technical descent uh, can be dangerous because you are losing the traction of the rear wheel so remember about that you may uh, have the right gearing on the uphill if you have 30 teeth in the front and some crazy a sprocket in the rear, it will be loud, it will really soak up some of your uh, watts and it's not the best uh, in my opinion. So lack of gears means you're not gonna get as much speed as you wanted. For example on, on this bike, when you, it was 3x8 old school drivetrain, I would go with no problem 60, 65 km per hour, 26 inch wheels on the same mountains on the same mountain on this one I just went up to maybe 50 kilometers per hour you can you can see my my movie with the lefty on the descent so just know that it has this problem okay and then problem number four is uh, the maybe not maintenance but wear down of those uh, of those um, parts because uh, when you cross the chain like that and you hear the noise of your drivetrain that means you are wearing down the chain ring the sprocket and the chain and also the um, rear derailleur has to work much harder in order to keep the chain in line with the cassette but here it's it's already uh, turning so the chain is really pulling uh, the cage of the of the rear derailleur uh, like it should be a your derailleur here so uh, you, you should pretty much know you will wear down your drivetrain more quickly. Now, let's try to just summarize what was uh, told here. If you are a weekend rider, if you ride maybe two, 300 kilometers per month and you are running SRAM GX, not really um, expensive components, you, you don't worry about wearing this down. 
but if you are riding this bike with Cannondale SI uh, chainring in the front with Shimano XT cassette or maybe you want to have lighter one and you put XTR that's gonna cause a lot of financial uh, issues for you because uh, if this is both your training and racing bike man you're gonna really really save some money for the drivetrain so just know that and then some other thing it's not an issue but i want to talk about some myth which is that one by drivetrain are more chain drop resistant here in the front because we have narrow white uh, chain rings in my opinion it is wrong it is just opposite why is it so because first of all if we have if we had here the front derailleur the front derailleur sketch actually works like a, makes a great chain guide so it secures the chain in place that's one thing and the other thing is that i've noticed is that we have this narrow white chain ring this um, this teeth is narrow then we have white for the outer links narrow for the inner links white for the outer links uh, those especially those wider ones if there is a lot of um, like sand and the mud they can actually push off the chain push the chain off the chain ring and it happened to me only twice but it happened during my races so it never happened uh, during my uh, trainings but i've made like five races this year two of them chain drop in the front how it happened it happened when i was riding uh, <laughs> this chain ring here and my uh, my highest gear because I really wanted to add up some speed on the descent uh, and then as you as you can imagine then the chain is not as uh, tight as on this uh, gear the lowest gear so it would uh, just uh, bounce a bit more and then uh, some mud some dirt on the chain ring actually helps to push the chain of the chain ring that's uh, that's what I've experienced and you should know about that all right and being simple yeah it is more simple it is it is cool it, it looks clean it is nice I like it but I never never had any issue with the front derailleur for my 23 I'm sorry 20, 23 years of uh, riding because the last year was already all the bikes won by drivetrain so uh, having the left shifter and the front derailleur is not an issue uh, at all okay so what i wanted to tell you what i promised to tell you is which bike uh, is the, suits the best for the one by drivetrain from these how do you think this wouldn't be the worst because i would i would want to have as as high speed as possible on on this bike uh, so I, I would not like to have um, one by on this one. This one, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put uh, front derailleur here. Now this one for the weekend rides, old school bike, you know, like cheap budget uh, project is okay. But the best one is this gravel bike, because I don't expect this bike uh, to help me with the super steep climbs. Uh, I'm not gonna go for some technical, you know, rides when I sometimes may maybe would want to spin backwards. So the chain line is not the problem here. And when I hit the road, I'm also not going to be the fastest um, biker and I'm not going to use gravel bike for uh, criteriums, for example. So having 42 teeth in the front and one by uh, and a 10 speed cassette in the rear is just enough. Uh, so yes, you know, one by drafting can work. Uh, I would imagine that on the gravel bike, you would maybe not uh, put you know the highest component components possible and you're maybe not gonna do like 15,000 kilometers per, per year on the bike even if you do on those budget uh, chain rings it's just okay so I would say for this gravel bike is fine for my budget project with 1 by 10 it was actually a, an experiment it was okay cross-country I would say okay but I prefer 2 by 10 uh, and trail bike I don't know if you if you don't need a speed on the trail bike it will be also okay because 30 and 40 t 42 will, will allow you to go up the hill but you're not gonna have a lot of speed on the downhill so know that that's what I wanted to share with you guys please uh, comment just uh, below the video I'm not saying one by drivetrain suck just just you know be aware of that as well but there are some problems really that we should know about 
when those guys online review new stuff which is more expensive and uh, when we are being told you should replace your old bike with the new stuff because you know it's not gonna be compatible in a couple of years maybe two years thank you for watching guys i'm waiting for you in the comment section bye